What is going on guys? Welcome to your 64th C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be beginning to talk about files. Now we need to be able to work with files because files are what you use to save data on your computer. And you're saying hold on Bucky I know what's used to save data you can just uh, you know store the data in variables or something like that. Well we can't exactly do that for permanent data for example whenever we store data in a variable and we close out of the program or maybe we want to shut down our computer that data is going to get wiped out now in order to save data permanently what we need to do is we need to store it on a file on our computer and what this does is whenever we're working with files it stores it to your hard drive it permanently etches it in there so then whenever we shut down our computer we can go ahead and pull it back up and everything is going to be working fine for example, if you were playing a computer game or if you had to write an essay for school, you wouldn't want to just store all that information in a variable because then the user would have no way of saving that data. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with files, storing them on the computer's hard drives, and that gives our user a permanent solution to save data. Very useful and, well, you're probably going to be working with files in every single program you're using unless you, you know, you're just making a cool animation or something so let's go ahead and the first thing I need to show you guys is we need to include an additional header file so let's go ahead and copy this save us a little bit of typing and instead of IO stream we're gonna put F stream right here now this is the header file that we need for file input and output without this header file we won't be able to work with files at all basically so that's your main file file I guess you could say. So let's go ahead and now that we got everything included we need, again, this is to work with files. This is to input and output data or basically how to add data to the file and read data from the file. So there you go and uh, let's go ahead and start coding now. So here is how you work with files in C++. The very first thing you need to do is you need to build an object. Since C++ can't work directly with the file itself, it needs to be able to go through objects just because, you know, whoever made C++, that's how they made it. So the very first thing we do is we need to write OF stream, right like that. And this allows us, well, there are different types of uh, file streams basically this is how you create a file object and right after this you give your file object a name any name you want I'm just gonna name mine Bucky's file now we have a file object aka access to a file so now the first thing that we want to do after this is we need to associate this object with a file itself because if we're just working with this object it's like alright you have like a billion files on your computer how am I supposed to know what object this one or excuse me what file this object is supposed to you know represent well that's what we do in the next line of code and in order to do that we go ahead and type the name of our object and we open a file and we just do that using the open function without the star right there and without this right there we use the open function and inside is a string we pass in what file do we want to open now I'm gonna go ahead and open tuna dot text and you're saying alright Bucky I don't have a tuna text file on my website or excuse me sorry I've been making uh, web tutorials way too often but you're saying alright Bucky I don't have a tuna text file on my computer so is it gonna crash whenever it tries to open it well no whenever you're working with files in C++ and it opens a file that doesn't exist it's gonna see that it doesn't exist and it's gonna automatically create one for you for example my file is going to get created right here. Now, as you can see in this directory, there is no tuna text file. So, whenever I try to open it, it's going to look for a tuna text file and it's going to say, doesn't exist. I'll create one for you. So, it's going to get created automatically. And it's pretty cool because it saves us, you know, a line of code from having to create it. So, basically, what we're going to be doing so far is creating a file object. That way, we have access to some file. And in this line of code right here, we're going to say, what file do we want to be associated with this object? Well, now, tuna text file is associated with this Bucky's file object. So now, basically, any input and output that we make to this object is going to be input and outputted in this file. We just can't, you know, input and output directly to the file because C++ won't let us. Basically, 
Bucky's file is the exact same thing as Tuna Text file from now on. So now we can go ahead and you know output characters to that file or whatever we want to output. For example, you're saying, all right, how do you output per, to a file? What are you talking about? Well, just go ahead and instead of outputting things to your computer screen like we have before, we use that operator right there, those two little less than signs, and we just write some text like, um, I love tuna and tuna loves me. And we won't end that line. Actually, you go ahead and put a new line just like that. And now you're saying, all right, before I had C out right there and it outputted to my computer screen. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and have Bucky's file right there. And all this text is going to output to a text file instead of the computer screen. So nothing's going to show up on the computer screen. What this means, this little operator, is output this data to this location. So before we were outputting the data to the computer screen and now we're just outputting it all to a file. Simple enough. I mean the operator is pretty cool and it works in that way. So now like I said we basically associated a file with an object in these two lines and now anytime we use this object name it pretty much knows we're going to be it represents this file so it knows whenever we want to output this text it's really outputting it to this tuna dot text file right here so that's going to run perfectly but at the end of all your programs when you're done working the files you always want to close that object and what that does is any you know little memory or buffers or any resources that the computer is using when it was working with this file right here it's going to close them out and it's going to free your computer's memory so it's just good programming practice to do this so let's go ahead and type our file object Bucky's file and just go ahead and type close with no parameters so let's go ahead and run this program and as you can see nothing happens right here because we didn't output anything to the computer screen but if we go ahead and take a look at that directory we now have a tuna text document that got created so if we go ahead and double click that the content of this is I love tuna and tuna loves me pretty cool huh so as you can see this would be useful whenever you're you know creating a computer game and you have a character with a bunch of statistics like health and you know happiness and hunger they can go ahead and play the game for you know an hour store all their data shut off their computer go to school go to work whatever come back and all their data is going to be right there for them it's not a new computer game every single time you start because that would be kind of a waste of time so that is how files are useful in computer programming and how to work with a simple text file so if you think you're done with files yet you got a long ways to go so in the next tutorial we're going to be covering more about files and trust me there's a lot more information that we need to learn but for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video